Hey folks, JD here, and today I wanted to address a question, well a couple of questions, that I've had via email and also via comments, and that is how to calibrate quadcopters. Now, there are lots of many different types of quadcopters. You've got the toy grade, which are these two here. You've got the hobby grade, uh, more of the ones that you put together yourself. And then you've got the professional grade, like you've got the Phantoms and um, the Wine X and, and everything else. Um, now, I would just be looking at the toy grade quadcopters here for the second. And exactly how do we calibrate them? Why should we calibrate them? When should we calibrate? Okay, so let's start off with the Tozo. Let's start off with a couple of other things as well. You calibrate right at the start of the flight. The calibration starts right from the time where you put you plug the battery in or turn the quadcopter on. And then your extra calibration then comes in the form of the gyro calibration from your transmitter. Now that varies from drone to drone. What I would recommend is first of all read your manual. Inside the manual it should tell you exactly how to calibrate the drone. If it doesn't then you may have to reach out a little bit further and see if anybody online has got any sort of uh, idea of how to calibrate. But 9 out of 10 times it should most definitely be inside the manual. So let's start off with a Tozo. So in order for the calibration to work what you need to do is you need to have your quadcopter on a nice flat level surface. If you have your quadcopter sticking up like this then pretty much the quadcopter when it comes to calibrating the gyros are going to think this is straight so it's going to fly like that. So if you have it nice and straight, nice and flat um, then plug in the quadcopter or turn on the quadcopter. Now what I do as I'm sure you've seen in a lot of videos is I hold up the quadcopter and then plug her in and then put it down as quickly as I possibly can. Now, that is fine as long as you give it a couple of seconds when it is on the, on, on, on the ground on a level surface just so that it can start the calibration. Now, if you watch, when I plug this in, you will notice the LEDs will flash very, very quickly for about three seconds and then it'll go into your standard quite intermittent on and off flashing ready for a, uh, a transmitter to bind with it. So let me show you. One two, three. I don't know if you saw that, but it's only for a couple of seconds. Flashes very quickly and then you get the standard intermittent um, slower flash. See? So pretty much when it's flashing at the start, it's starting to calibrate. Um, so at, it's at this point then you would attach your transmitter. So I'm going to hold this your way so you can see the correct way. So what you do is you turn on, now with the toes it automatically binds after a couple of seconds so there's no need to increase the full, to open the throttle all the way and then back to zero. You just keep the throttle exactly where it is. Now, how would you calibrate? Well, for this what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a few times. So you would take the left and the right analog stick and you would put them down into the bottom corner of each. Now, if you think, I always think of an analog stick as a clock face. So if you were to point both the analog sticks left and right over to the eight on the clock face, then you will see that the quadcopter flashes and that lets you know that calibration is starting and calibration is completing. When the flashing has stopped, calibration has stopped totally and then you can unlock the motors and you can start your flight. Now, if you notice when the quadcopter is uh, is elevated, if you notice it moving to one, one way more than the other, then you can use your trim buttons. Trim buttons will give you the extra stability. So if your quadcopter, let me just unplug all this and turn all this off and I'll show you what I mean using the quadcopter. So if you notice, when you take off, it takes off nice, but then it starts to move and it's not the wind. But obviously you have to take into account um, environmental changes as well like breeze wind or anything like that if you notice when you take off it's not straight then you can use trim forward back left and right in order to recalibrate the drone and in order to make it stand in order to make it fly rather a little bit more straight um, now if you find that this doesn't work land it turn it off and go through the whole calibration uh, process again. Starting off with plugging it in, leaving it down, giving it a few seconds, turning on the transmitter and then calibrating. And then you should find it should fly okay. If it doesn't, then you may have to seek manufacturer's assistance because there may be something wrong with the quadcopter itself. Now this is one way to calibrate, but a lot of other quadcopters calibrate in different ways. So if we look at the JD20 here, now the only reason I've used these two quadcopters is because they were at hand uh, and I thought I would use them as these calibrate in different ways. So what you've got with this one is you'd have to turn this on to begin with 
and then once this is on, it helps if I push the button down, well done. Uh, <laughs> once it's on, obviously you have your LEDs flashing as usual, but again, the quadcopter is on a level base. And then turn on the transmitter, and then with this one you need to bind up and down. And then once you've done that, the quadcopter, as you can notice now, all LEDs are nice and solid. Once you've done this, the way to calibrate the drone is to move both the analog sticks into each other. So as you can notice there, when I do it, watch the LEDs on, on, on the quadcopter. They flash again. Just to let you know that you are calibrating the gyros, and that before too long, this quadcopter is going to be ready for you to fly. Alright, and one last time, just for you to see. There we go. And it's as easy as that. Once again, you are going to have to have a level base in order to uh, to start calibration so that the quadcopter knows exactly what is uh, exactly so the quadcopter calibrates correctly rather uh, once you've done that you should be fine you should be fine to fly and there should be no issues whatsoever uh, if there are once again you can use your trim buttons in order to sort out the little little bit of flying issues and then hopefully to increase and hopefully then you're going to have a good flight now just to give you some sort of an idea in the past six months i think i have used trim twice or three times it's hardly something that i don't use because i find once you've calibrated the gyros nine out of ten times the quadcopter will fly perfectly obviously you've got to take things in, into consideration like environmental changes wind and stuff like that especially if you're quadcopter is like these and they aren't a gps locking quadcopter so therefore your barometer even though it will hold it at a particular altitude you are going to notice that it does move backwards and forwards for that i don't usually tend to use any trim at all i just tend to counteract with very slight movements on the on the, quad, the quadcopter controller so this short video has just been a little video just to show you exactly how to calibrate uh quadcopters now obviously as I mentioned earlier, you do need a couple of things to bear in mind. You do need a flat level service in order to uh, to, to start the calibration off correctly. Double check your manual to ensure you are calibrating it correctly as well. And also have a little look and see when the quadcopter takes off that it is nice and as steady as it possibly can be. All right then, folks. So thanks ever so much for watching and listening. I've been JD. You've been fantastic as always. If you haven't already, please subscribe and give us a like. Hello and welcome to all the new subscribers. I hope you're enjoying the channel. So until next time, my friends, happy flying.